My vision is for Aston to be astonishing. We have world-class universities and we're surrounded by beautiful landscape, yet our economy has been focused on digging things out of the ground and serving avocado toast to each other. The squandering of opportunities has coincided with a brain drain from Australia. And just like so many industries, there's now a shortage of engineering skills, which is hampering our progress in rescuing the climate. The innovations in our society are not being applied to actually improving our way of life. Instead, they're being applied to squeezing us, lying to us, and keeping us distracted from what's really happening in the world. Sure, we might have our ideological differences, but something we can agree on is that the powerful forces guiding our society do not have our best interests at heart. They are interested in hoarding their riches, in preserving their cushy jobs, or hiding their guilt. Something other than ensuring the well-being of humanity and our ecology. The Victorian government runs a forestry company that profits from chopping down native forests, turning the wood into wood chip, pulp and pallets. This insane conflict of interest is undermining the habitat of our native animals when urban sprawl, the solution to the housing crisis, was already putting them at enough danger. The Liberal and Labor governments continue to subsidise fossil fuels. They continue to green light new projects, just business as usual, despite the repeated claims that the Labor Party would be different. The transition of electricity is only happening at half the rate necessary to reach the promised underwhelming goal of net zero by 2050. As people try to hasten their own reduction, they turn to the economy of carbon credits, which is rampant with financial trickery. In California, for instance, people received credits for not chopping down trees, but then the trees burnt in a forest fire and people could still trade the credits after the fire. When people think of what's ahead, it's not just a climate crisis, but killer AIs who might destroy the planet in order to maximise the production of paper clips. Suppose we have an AI whose only goal is to make as many paper clips as possible. The AI will realise quickly that it would be much better if there were no humans, because humans might decide to switch it off. Because if humans do so, there would be fewer paper clips. Also, human bodies contain a lot of atoms that could be made into paper clips. Rather than looking to the AIs, though, consider what we already have. Soulless companies and governments whose pursuit of GDP growth is actively killing life on our planet. The solution to this incomplete accounting system is apparently to double down and add another accounting system to the model. This is to say nothing of how the pursuit of GDP growth is undermining our mental health and the effectiveness of our institutions. Imagine if, instead of just GDP, we also tracked our happiness score, the same as New Zealand is already doing. Our lives are lived online, and we're now at the whims of Google, Facebook and Amazon. We used to have a democratic say in how our society should be run, but instead, our governments have been focused only on maintaining their power over increasingly irrelevant aspects of our life. Police crack down on even the most minimal protests. Our freedom of thought gets undermined, allowing incumbent powers to continue exploiting a shrinking pie in exactly the process described by Asimoglu and Robinson in Why Nations Fail. Our ineffective governments and the extractive monopolies are causing our cost of living to stay high despite all the technological progress happening in our society. Skilled workers are finding themselves in the degrading and monotonous gig economy, twerking in front of a webcam or delivering paper towel. They're lucky if they receive access to a screaming booth. Why are we moving towards worse jobs? The technological innovations taking place should be lowering the cost of living, enabling us to live happier, more fulfilling lives, where any work we do is optional. Imagine being free of stress, mental health demons and domestic violence. Imagine a world where we're free to achieve self-actualization, discovering, learning and growing communities. Universal basic income is able to give people a break from economic servitude and grant them the freedom to explore new paths in life. Paths that better use their unique passions and better serve our planet. Through such solutions, we'll have a virtuous cycle of people doing their best work and liberating each other from the mundane. Freeing ourselves from the economic pressure to prop up immoral, destructive companies. We can make the most of democratic, inclusive developments like open source software. 
we can spur on the proliferation of tools and systems to run our society, and even foreign societies, in a democratic way, producing a way of life that our capitalist monopolists and exploitative dictators have no interest in creating for us. We do not need to be at the whim of American tech companies. We do not need to be victims of emerging AIs. To avoid our current fate, though, it would be great to have governments that actually understand the latest technologies and how to apply them. Parties who can see a problem before it hits them in the face. Problems like the housing crisis or the lack of railways in Roeville to connect our communities. I studied robotics and computer science at the University of Sydney, finishing with first class honours. I've worked at one and two person startups in Sydney and New York. I've worked on the mind reading recommender systems at Amazon. Recently, I've been working as a principal software engineer on applying real world blockchain technologies. If voters want someone who understands the latest technological trends and who's interested in applying them in a democratic way to society, then this election in Aston is your chance to make something incredible happen. Authorised by A. Leong, Fusion, Brunswick.